Hi there, this is Manish Vijay from PM Pulse bringing to you yet another power packed episode on PM Ninja video series. In this episode, we are going to talk about several myths about Agile, savage myths about Agile. In fact, the reason I call them savage is because for some reason, these myths have continued over a great passage of time for nearly a decade. And not only that, these myths have been actually you know, assumed to be true by organizations, thereby producing horrific results. And therefore, it's very important for me to talk about the savage myths about Agile. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure when you search on the internet for myths about Agile, in fact, what they write as a myth is a myth itself. So there is so much of layers upon layers of impropriety, misunderstanding upon misunderstanding when it comes to Agile. Agile is quite simple, but nobody wants to look at it that way. They think it's a new beast. So in this particular video, a very practical video, some of things you may not be able to digest, especially you've bought into those myths. But take a moment to reflect on it and you will see the light of the day. In order to go through all those myths and understand what they are and why they are being called as myths, keep watching. All right, now that you're back, let's talk about the first myth about Agile, right? This has been partly understood and still partly highly misunderstood by many, uh, you know, Agile practitioners, as we like to call them. This is called, there is hardly any documentation or there is no documentation required in Agile. When I talk about documentation, I'm talking about documents involved in planning, documents involved in changes, documents involved in regular work that happens over the period of time during execution, as well as design. I'm talking about the entire gamut of documentation. The only difference is that in Agile, there is a lot of documentation, just like any other project. How can you really have a project without documentation, however? Your style of documentation is slightly different from that of traditional projects, which is, you know, waterfall or any other project whatsoever. But when you talk about Agile, you need to understand that your upfront planning has to be even more well thought of. It does not plan the entire project in one shot, for sure, because it will evolve over a time. But the fact that it is going to evolve over a period of time, the amount of architectural modularity that you have to plan, the amount of, uh, you know, uh, amount of forethought that you have to give into the fact that you're trying to create a plan which will have bits and pieces added to it later. So whatever you plan now uh, should not be half-baked, should not be a quick plan. You have to actually have a very clear plan so that other components could be added to it later. So all of that has to be done upfront. A lot of planning goes into it. I've done multiple Agile projects, even before the time it was called an Agile. Don't think it's new. It's been there for quite some time. It's just an extension of common sense. If you're good in project management, certain situations need uh, what you call as Agile. We used to call it by a different name then, but you know that needs to be done. It's a very simplistic, uh, extension of uh, you know altering your development life cycle to meet that of the expectations of the customer it's, it's that simple and it needs documentation it needs massive upfront thinking and therefore the documentation in agile is quite extensive it just builds over a period of time people are confusing the concept of lean with uh, documentation. Lean basically means avoiding wastage. That means your documentation should not be holding you back. 
and that is true even for non-agile projects like for example if you do a project which is very large you have certain templates for it to fill it up i'm talking about a waterfall project and then you are doing a much smaller project you should not be filling up the same templates because it's going to hold you back because this is your processes have to scale down your documents have to scale up and down based on the kind of projects that you're doing right and certain documents are just not needed for a smaller project those kind of oversight may not be needed so scalability is not uh, you know something does not mean that you know to be scalable does not mean that you do not have documentation this is where people really get confused lean does not mean that developers have a free say in whatever they do just imagine you're trying to code something which does not have coding standards just imagine the amount of problems that you're going to go through just think about it right imagine trying to come out with iteration after iteration of code which has to fit into uh, you know the customers uh, in production code you'll put it on a production server sorry you put it on a staging server and then you'll put it in a production server if everything is okay how do you think it'll uh, you know fit on to a running uh, platform a running project right how would you do that <laughs> right you need fantastic uh, you know architectural skills the database architecture all of these have to be documented the risk management the risk register even is more important in agile because the amount of risk that you'd be hit with in agile are way more just because of its methodology are way more than it will hit you when you're talking about traditional projects so think about it your team charters all of these things are documents important documents however what you will not be doing is bureaucracy so that's a difference huge difference right so don't confuse between these two things right so and please don't fall for these people who have not worked on agile but they're teaching on agile right they're just talking i don't know what they're talking half the time i meet agile practitioners i really don't even know where they get this information from all right i'm sorry <laughs> being a little emotional because i don't get what these people are doing right so they're just making a mess and that's the reason why most of the implementations of agile across at least in india that i'm aware of is bad people are suffering from it some of the organizations have completely shunned agile hey I mean, it doesn't really work so we're going to throw it out it's beautiful depends on when to use it right so that's that's the main point all right let's look at the second point myth number 2 the agile was recently invented in 2010 2011 i don't know exactly when this agile alliance was created i don't care right they it was only codified only this this methodology existed long time back we used to call it shinkansen shinkansen means bullet train japanese bullet train that means faster delivery very bit size uh, you know deliveries so that the customer can look at it and figure out are we in the right direction or not this is how we ended up creating the largest selling the first anti fraud system in the world the very first anti fraud system in the world imagine nobody had any clue no banks knew anything we were working for a bank and they told us they need is there a possibility and that's why it was an evolutionary software so we started working in bits and pieces a little bit just to show it to them they'll say maybe this will not work maybe this is going to work or when i when we showed them something it generated a whole plethora of new ideas and we would move forward and therefore we called it shinkansen quick small deliveries from station to station station to station right just like that today oh by the way this was in uh 1998 1999 i mean i'm talking about that far back and now we call it agile i think in 2010 it has just been codified it has been given some name as agile as in agility right it has some methodologies called scrum right that is exactly what we used to do we never called it scrum but now it's called scrum it doesn't really matter it's been codified which is a good thing because now that it is codified people should be able to work on it as a discipline right which was just a common sense earlier which is a good thing but there is some other aspect of agile which i'm going to discuss a little later because of which people have you know they're taking agile as a brand new thing which is a very big mistake it's been there for a very long period of time but it's definitely not new right it's it's just the name is new so 
keep that in mind. It's been there for a very long period of time. All right, let's look at myth number three. All right, this is a very serious myth. In fact, when you search the internet, there are myths which actually say that there is a myth that agile cannot be used in all domain. That itself is a very big myth. And these are being made by those people who have no clue about different kinds of methodologies. Today, what people have done is they think, especially agile practitioners, they think that anything which is not waterfall is agile, which in itself is the biggest, I'm sorry, I'm going to use a very hard statement. It's one of the most stupid things on the planet. After, <laughs> I'm sorry for that. There is waterfall, right? which is fine, it's predictive, right? It's the most common even today. But then came the concept of, you know, intermittent deliveries over a period of time. I have a low budget, but I'm trying to make a greenfield project, a huge plant, and it is dependent on the money when I receive from my equity, uh, you know, uh, offerings, uh, you know, public offerings or infrastructure bonds from, my, from the government. And based on that, based on the funding that I get from different sources, I increase my huge plant, like a steel plant that I'm building. So I first make the furnace, start using it, generating electricity, you know, uh, through steam and giving it to the local government grid. By that time, we get some money from the grid. We also get some money from the next round of funding. So we now have a uh, you know, uh, a smelting unit. Later on, we have a rolling unit. Later on, we have a shed and so on. Over a period of time, our entire uh, factory kind of builds up. That means this entire plant is being built up in stages. This is called incremental, right? But what people don't understand that incremental has been there for a very long period of time, even during the days when the, you know, thousands of years back, how do you think pyramids were built? They were not built, in, they were built over generations, incrementally, right? So incrementally basically means that, uh, you know, you don't make something and leave it half. No, that's not what is incremental. That means, that means a project is not finished. Incremental means that it is usable. Whatever that you do, it's been partly delivered, but that partly delivered part can be used in its own way. And then later on, we can do something else, right? And build upon it. That is called incremental. Then there is another one which is used for R&D, which is called iterative. The moment R&D was invented, so was iterative, right? So it does not have any kind of a intermittent delivery piece. We just keep on going through it again and again, figure out, okay, after one iteration, did we get this right? No, I think there's something wrong. We need to do this part better. We go through it again and again and again and again. It's also called spiral. And after a period of time, we say, I think it works. Now let's release it into the market. That's exactly what it is. So we have waterfall, we have incremental, and we also have iterative. Now that's not agile, right? That's, that's what people think, that anything which is not waterfall is agile. That's wrong. They've been there for a very long period of time. Agile, first of all, let's understand what it is. Agile is a combination of iterative and incremental. Incremental uh, projects, uh, you know, a typical incremental project will take something like... Uh, uh, a month or two months, especially in construction, right, to build something and give it to you. So it has a pretty long life cycle. It also has a major deliverable. So we make it much shorter when it comes to Agile. We'll just make it into a four week or a three week deliverable with very minimum uh, stuff, which even if we kind of revisit or destroy, we can do it. But in terms of incremental, we cannot really make changes in things which have already been delivered. It's very expensive. Yep prohibitively expensive right but in agile we give such small incrementals that we can actually travel back and say okay why retrospectively we can remove something or change something that is the flexibility we get in agile plus it is also like iterative it is also evolutionary in nature we we kind of thrash around we figure out okay where are we going will this work will that work will this work will the market react better we will do accordingly right so it's a combination of both Iterative as well as incremental. Now, can you really think you can build a house using, now that you understand exactly what it is, can you build your house like this? Can you? Can you build a flyover like this? Can you construct roads like this? Just think about it. 
So when people talk about agile can be applied anyway, it's just it's those consultants who just want to sell their products to every organization so that they can make money, but it can't be used. So concepts have to be very clear, right? It's just not possible. Just think about it. In fact, I challenged some of these great speakers coming in from US and that fellow stopped talking to me because he had no answers to my question. I only asked him one thing that, uh, do you have any evidence of agile being used in any infrastructure? I gave him an open door. He did. I followed up a couple of times, but I think then I realized probably I'm embarrassing him. You know, I, we, we just stopped. That's the situation uh, with people, right? So <laughs> don't fall for this, right? Anyway, so that takes care of your third myth, which is agile can be applied to all domains. Sorry, it can only be applied to software development and partly IT, uh, partly telecom, not even complete IT. Like for example, if you have hardware, uh, in your organization, like your servers and all. Can you do it in Agile? Can you build it up in Agile? Do you know the, of course you can, but the cost, you have to be, you know, like either a fool <laughs> or humongously rich or both to do that, right? It doesn't really make sense. Similarly, in telecom, you cannot apply it everywhere. In telecom, like I, I won't name the companies, I consult quite a few of them. They've actually rejected Agile when it comes to VLSI or embedded, uh, you know, coding completely gone because uh, you have to have a clear scope in embedded te technologies to be able to you know really code something but agile doesn't work like that so you cannot do it incrementally for uh, uh, you know what I call VLSI or <laughs> embedded so what I'm trying to say is even in software even in IT even in telecom it's not universally applicable so it's got a very small window yes the business in software is quite a bit so it can be applied there but trying to apply it in infrastructure civil industries services I'm sorry it won't right? don't even try right so once we understand the concepts clearly it makes better sense all right so let's move on to the fourth savage myth about agile that Agile does not need project managers. They only need servant leaders. <laughs> Sometimes I really don't know what to you know, make of such things. This is a stuff I've heard from actual uh, professionals, senior guys, director levels in IT companies, known IT companies, famous IT companies. That's the situation. You need project managers is only that Agile does not like to use the word project manager because if they use the word project manager, it would mean, so it's a political thing. It's a, not even a political thing. It's more to do with creating their own space, right? So the point is that when it talks about project manager, they would be pointing towards PMBOK or PMI and that's what they did not want to do. So they wanted to kind of create their own ecosystem, right? That's why they did not talk about Microsoft project, they did not talk about anything, they just came out with Jira. Instead of talking about critical path or baselines, they came out with burn down, burn up chart. They are exactly the same thing with a different name to it, different flavor to it, and people think it's completely different. So again, the same thing happens with project manager. Project manager is needed in many companies where they really understand Agile, they actually call He's an agile project manager. He's working on an agile project. It's just that don't, you know, methodology that shifts. You are a project manager. And over there, the project management has to be different. You use the methodology of agile. That's it. Agile is just a methodology. It's not an alternate to project management. It is one of the ways of doing project management in certain situation and in certain domain. It's very simple. But then PMI, then a lot of people say, you know what, they are servant leaders. Well, a project manager also has to be a servant leader in other organizations. Like, for example, uh, in other projects, for example, iterative. In iterative, uh, nobody knows what needs to be done. Like, you have to create a new vaccine. You have a project manager, right, who's going to look into the triple constraints, a lot of things. He's going to make sure that the people are working clearly. But they cannot instruct you because they don't know anything on their own because they have hired the best people uh, who are self-organized team, he, they will actually try to figure out. And all the project manager has to do is figure out, okay, how much have we gone further? How much have we achieved? What is it that we are doing? What is it that we should not be doing? What is the governance, right? And at the same time, what is it that that is creating a hurdle for this team, the crack team to come out with this R&D? 
what's the problem that they are facing. So if you think that self-organized team is a new concept, I have worked on it in an R&D project about two decades back. So don't even think that these things never existed. These are all there. It's just that they're using different terms. So servant leadership existed all this while. It has just become a little more famous now. So people think that, you know what, in Agile, there is no project manager. There are servant leaders. No, they are project managers, but instead of applying uh, what I call a controlling technique, they have to have a more serving technique because nobody knows what has to be delivered because it is evolutionary in nature. The scope is not very clear. You cannot go and tell each of the team members that this is your job today and this is your job tomorrow. No, the team has to decide it among themselves because they are trying to crack a problem. And that's why you need to serve them by removing their impediments. And that's why we call them servant leader. So project manager is there in Agile. In fact, you cannot do an Agile project, such complex project without a, in fact, a very matured project manager, not only a person with agile uh, frame of mind, right, but they also need to be extremely mature to be able to do this, right? So they are one of the best project managers. That's what it is. It's just that in agile, agile alliance or whatever, or scrum, whatever they call themselves, they have things like uh, uh, scrum master, all of that. Those names have been invented so they can invent some new uh, certifications because money is connected to it. It's a big business, right? PMI has a big business. BABOK has a big business, means uh, IBA have a big business. So is the case with uh, these. They are all in competition, right? So it's a very big business. So they all try to create their own ecosystem. But we need to be smarter. We should not fall for this ecosystem. We need to understand what it is. We have to apply it in the real world. That's the thing, right? That's where the disconnect is. All right, so I've taken care of this myth as well. So let's move on to the fifth last but one. And that is, it requires a completely different mindset. Agile needs a completely different mindset. And I have been told this by well-meaning senior CTOs and stuff like that. And they seemed very childlike when they said that. You see what is an agile mindset? Do you even know what it is? Agile mindset is simply, you see there are two kinds of mindsets. It's not agile, it's just change mindset. So there are two kinds of mindset. One is a fixed mindset and one is a change oriented mindset. Fixed mindset is like my dad, my father. He was one of the senior most project managers when it come to paper industry. Even today, though he's 89 years old, you can find, you can, if you talk to a very senior uh, uh, somebody who's achieved really something in paper industry, paper manufacturing industry, they would know my father. He was that famous. He's built plants all over the planet. However, the issue is that if you ask, if you ask him to do something which is evolutionary in nature, when the scope is not very clear, his, he gets pretty irritated. He'll simply say, dude, make up your mind. Is this what you want or this is what you want? Come to me only once your mind is clear. He's a fantastic project manager, but he's not change oriented because those days things were very different. Today, you have to work with a lot of ifs and buts, right? You have to start working with limited knowledge and try your best to move forward by taking feedback from the customers, by applying your best judgment, to by applying a very good team, which are called self-governed team, right? We look at various resources to chart our way forward. That means we are moving forward without having a complete scope. Not everybody can do it. So you have to have that change-oriented mindset, a fluid mindset, which is basically called agile mindset. So don't think that agile mindset was needed only because of agile. We used to call it a more change-oriented uh, mindset when we were working in iterative projects, when we were working in incremental projects, right? So don't think that these things are new. That's basically what it is. So if you have a, a, a mindset which is oriented to change, that you know things change and things evolve, you have a little bit more business acumen, less fixated, and because of the world is moving towards more complex projects, you need to be a little fluid in your thinking and approach. And that's basically what is called agile mindset. There is no separate, uh, you know, God's rays coming from some Brahmya Gyan coming to your mind from somewhere sitting under a tree. That's not what agile is, right? So it's basic change-oriented mindset, right? 
but people tend to make it out to be no manish we need a different mindset and they themselves do not know what that mindset it's like trying to define leadership right for them they don't even know the meaning of the term leadership but they'll give you a half an hour lecture about what leadership should do but they'll never be able to apply in the real world the same thing is happening with agile mindset any and everything and the best part is for a simple thing as change you know fluidity or change mindset change oriented mindset if you just present it like this it's simple everybody can follow it and you can clearly make out that who's change mindset or who's fixed mindset and accordingly you apply the right person at the right job but when you don't do it you actually allow anybody or everybody to come out with a new meaning of the term agile mindset and all of that it just becomes hogwash it just becomes uh, how do i say showmanship but it does not get you anywhere no you don't need a special mindset for that absolutely not i, I don't buy it uh, we've been working on agile even before this name agile came in and we did like award winning project so let's not even go there right try it and test it all right so don't fall for that it just needs basically change oriented mindset all right so let's talk about the last of the six savage myths around agile and the sixth one is agile projects on fixed price contract you see a lot of uh, people think that you can do agile projects on a fixed price contract and i have seen organizations pick it up and the only thing that it results into is it stops being agile it just becomes something that somehow or the other we need to get it done because it's a fixed price contract we are not get more money so though you're supposed to be working in an agile project and you're supposed to evolve over a period of time take different directions but because it's a fixed price contract you will actually thunk it down you'll always try to enforce it get this work done in so period of time you have to reduce your cost so what happens to your agile and that's why people feel overworked in agile whenever they get involved in agile it only translates into tremendous amount of overwork and overtime and tremendous amount of rework no weekends and stuff like that that's a problem you cannot get into an agile project if you have a fixed price contract you can get into an incremental but definitely not agile so understand the difference between incremental and agile there's a huge difference right if you don't then you know just watch one of my other videos about you know different life cycles that will give you an idea but people think this is again connected to the same issue that anything that is not waterfall is a child that's one of the worst things that you can do there are two other very important uh, pre-existing methodologies one is incremental one is iterative and just don't think that you know agile has to be applied everywhere no absolutely not agile works in very specific circumstances otherwise waterfall and incremental are pretty good in fact most of the work that i see happening in agile could be done better with just incremental right but they wanted to enforce agile because we are doing the latest methodology that attitude has to stop right it's useless it's it's not the only method okay it's one of the methods right and it has to be done at a specific period of time and therefore one thing that has to be kept in mind is that you never ever do agile projects in a fixed price contract if the customer is insisting on a fixed price contract and it has to be done in stages change the methodology to incremental so that you can actually have longer life cycles show it to the management so that there is less changes in that longer you know development iterations and then show it to the customers and then move accordingly the num the amount of risks for changes and overshooting your fixed price contract will become a lot less but in agile is going to be chaos right you never do an agile project on a fixed price contract it doesn't work at all <laughs> try doing it you'll see whatever i've said will come true all right having said that guys i'm sorry it just made it a big a bit longer but i wanted to just remove all these misunderstandings and misconceptions about agile all right thank you for watching and this was manish shujay from pm pulse bringing to you yet another power packed episode from pm ninja video series if you like it do subscribe 
do uh, you know put a thumbs up mark leave comments that'll be great i would like to hear more about what you have to say about these myths or any other uh, myths that you might be aware of in agile and probably go ahead and make another video about it if you have any question just put it there and since we do not advertise at all i would request you to go ahead and share this with you with as many people as you can just helps us right thank you for watching catch you later